Joining me now is Spencer Overton, president of the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies, also professor at George Washington Law School. Spencer, welcome to you. So we know Thanks. it's likely going to take several days before all the results are in. Could right. that leave room for conspiracy theorists? They could start spinning lies to discredit the election. Is that what you expect? Alex, vote by mail ballots are going to take longer to count because many states don't start counting them until Election Day. Right. Democrats are more likely to vote uh, by mail than Republicans. And so we shouldn't be surprised if on election night, many Republicans have large leads, but those leads shrink by Wednesday or Thursday as mail ballots are counted. And when that happens, we'll see conspiracy theorists claiming that mail ballots are somehow tainted. We'll see conservative groups try to pressure election officials and file lawsuits to throw out mail ballots. Uh, Alex, th this is going to be a battle over whose votes get counted, and it could have a significant effect on uh, which candidates win. I'm going to ask a question that I have actually no idea the answer to, which is, is there any way to streamline the counting of votes to avoid this altogether? Yeah, there are some ways to do it. The big issue in many states is they don't want to count early votes early and have the release get out and then that affect people. They yeah, say, influence. oh, I don't need to go vote. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason many states wait until election day to, to count those vote by mail ballots. Is there, uh, are there certain elections that you expect to take longer to finalize? And can you get any idea that the timetable, how long it's going to take? Yes, yeah, certainly elections that are close, certainly elections where there are a large number of uh, a vote by, by mail uh, issues are there. I think one thing I'm concerned about would be this notion of interference by, by poll monitors and other watchers. We've seen in Arizona yeah. uh, an order that, that w was issued, and there is a these, these poll monitors could really uh, Issues could escalate into violence. We could see lines uh, extended and, and be longer as a result. So that is certainly a concern of mine. Let, let me pick up on that, because in Arizona, a federal judge, as you know, issued that restraining order against an election monitoring group after their right. so-called watchers. They were accused of standing by the drop boxes. They were armed. They were wearing tactical gear. What's your reaction to all this, to this reality out there? Right. Well, as a part of their attack on vote by mail, conspiracy theorists have started groups to so-called hunt people that they call mules, who they, they argue are illegally stuffing drop boxes with multiple ballots with, with absolutely no evidence. This can intimidate voters. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, this federal judge issued an order prohibiting uh, one group from taking photos or videos mm -hmm. of voters, from openly carrying firearms, from yelling at voters. This kind of intimidation, Alex, doesn't just affect Arizona. It can discourage voters nationwide from, from participating. So it's an issue. So uh, as you know, there's growing concern about the future of our elections in general based on who wins the midterms. Right. And, and here's an example. Take a listen to a comment that's made by uh, Tim Michaels, the GOP candidate in the Wisconsin governor's race. It's all about the acronyms. It's all about LGBTQ and CRT and BLM. I just want to go to work, raise my family, go to church on Sunday, go to my kids' ball game, and the Democratic Party doesn't care about any of that. Republicans will never lose another election in Wisconsin after I'm elected governor. Now, for what it's worth, we should, we should say that he did try to walk back, clarify what he intended to say there. Right. But he said that, and that got out there for a while at least. How significant will the midterm results be on democracy and the 2024 elections? Alex, this isn't just Wisconsin. Trump advisor Steve Bannon and other election deniers have pushed a national movement to take over the machinery of elections. Those candidates who win, whether they're governors, secretaries of state, or county election directors, uh, they will likely enact new restrictions that make it harder to vote and give partisans more power over elections. Also, in future elections, many election denier candidates will certify election results only when their favorite candidates win. Their favorite candidates win, uh, and we could have a constitutional crisis in which a legitimately elected president does not assume office. Right now, the most important action that people can take is to not be intimidated but to go to the polls and vote. They have problems. Call 866-R-VOTE. But going to vote is incredibly important at this juncture.
Spencer, I'm curious, this scenario, a long night, people staying up, people getting all anxious and they're wondering what's right. going to happen and if, they're, if their team, if you will, has won. What do you expect the day after? Is that a day when all this puts together, it kind of foments into potentially explosive behavior? Do you worry about the day after the election? I am concerned, especially if it's unclear who's controlling the Senate in the House, because I know that in a lot of close races, we're not going to know the outcome. And just to give you a sense, uh, in 2020, 58 percent of Democrats voted by mail. So that just gives you a sense of the magnitude of how many mail ballots there will be. And those will likely not be counted and could affect the outcome. So we should just be patient. It could take some time. Thank you.